very much all for coming to our site event today. Um, during the last part session, um, we had a long discussion about the corruption report written by three judges, which um, had deeply worrying conclusions that for years corruption had been widely known, many MPs had been involved, and no one had done anything about it. Since then, Committee has actually sanctioned a few members, and the Parliament still have to start sanctioning, I shall say. They're not really on their way. Um, I think we're still not there. So this afternoon I will ask the um, Council of Ministers what they have done. Because on the one hand we had a government, the government of Azerbaijan, who, um, according that, to that report, um, had some actions which were corrupted in nature, and on the other hand, we had politicians accepting that. Both sides did wrong things. One of the most fascinating parts of the report is that um, the then ambassador of Azerbaijan, Mr. Mamadov, told the Secretary General and his assistant several times about um, the corruption which was going on. And the Secretary General hasn't really answered to that. Um, you've seen that we asked him some questions, but um, he was sort of saying that was not up to him to do, deal with it. Well, I can tell you, we have several resolutions on whistleblowing. The first one in 2010, asking explicitly for proper whistleblowing rules within the Council of Europe. That means not that you have to take for granted or take at face value every, everything someone says, not even an ambassador. So it's not that you say, okay, everything he says is true, but you at least have an obligation to investigate. That obligation has not been dealt with. So today I'm very um, happy that I can, that uh, Mr. Mamadov, who now lives in Brussels, um, and is no longer working for the um, Azeri government, can tell us what he knows and what he did around 2011-2012. Thank you very much uh, for this introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for this introduction. I'm very excited to be again in this building of the Council of Europe where I was ambassador from the end of 2006 till 2012. Uh, and of course, uh, I am. for me this organization is is very important. Uh, when we joined in 2001, we were believing that this organization will, will make difference in our country. As uh, chair of the National Council of Opposition Parties, Jamil Hassan Lee was saying, when Azerbaijan was joining the Council of Europe in 2001, the people of Azerbaijan were hopeful that their country will embrace the European and the Council of Europe values. But 15 years after, we see that what happened is vice versa. In fact, Azerbaijan, the regime has successfully exported the values of uh, corruption, uh, uh, you know, money laundering and everything to the Council of Europe. And even through the Council of Europe, it extended even further. Uh, uh, after reading the report prepared by the Independent Investigation Body, we can see to what extent the corruption penetrated to the Council of Europe, uh, to the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe and the Council of Europe in general. It's not just members of the PASE and uh, Council of Europe in, in general, uh, but Secretariat of the Parliamentary Assembly, Secretariat of the Council of Europe in general, the member states are involved. On 13th of June, I had seven hours testimony before Italian investigation team that visited, uh, that, that is working on the Luca Valonte case that visited me in, in Brussels. I was called by the uh, Belgium Police Department to, uh, to have testimony before investigation. And I was uh, really impressed by the work done by Italian investigation team. Uh, 
And I see that uh, there are more things that will come, uh, w will be known in the future. Uh, and I, I suspect that the new, gov new Italian government has suspicion that uh, through Luca Valonte, Azerbaijani government was uh, paying bribes to some Italian uh, members of government also to promote transatlantic, uh, transatlantic pipeline project. Because the questions were specifically whether I know something about this case. Uh, really, I didn't know about that, but, but uh, I think that there are serious uh, suspicions to believe that uh, this uh, 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 you know, corruption octopus went far beyond the Council of Europe. And Council of Europe was also an instrument to, to influence <coughs> EU governments, to influence their decision on key issues which affect European uh, economy, European politics, European uh, geostrategic choices. Uh, I believe that by bringing the light to the corruption octopus that embraced the Council of Europe, we can save European values that are seriously endangered when the future existence of one strong pan-European democracy institution is in danger. And everyone, including the Secretary General of the organization, should accept his fault and responsibilities for the crisis of the Council of Europe. Uh, instead of accepting the mistakes that brought the Council of Europe to such a shameful situation, uh, leadership of this organization tries to say that what was happening within the walls of the Council of Europe is just passé issue, that this is just a passé, what was happening with passé, but others are not responsible. Nobody wants to acknowledge that this corruption octopus embraced the entire organization. And the evidences that were provided by the, uh, by the members of the secretariat, by the members of the team, to the independent uh, uh, investigation board, proves that this corruption octopus penetrated everything, all the cabinets of this uh, once respectful international organization. Uh, nobody accepted responsibility. Nobody said, I'm sorry. Did you hear that anyone whose name is mentioned in this uh, report said, I'm sorry? Nobody said that. Nobody, nobody. Everyone says that, oh, you know, yes, there was something. We heard something. We did something. Uh, but it's not our fault. And this is something that is not acceptable. Uh, uh, what happened that dozens of people uh, members of the passé accepted the bribes. Some others accepted uh, a different kind of, uh, you know, cadeau, different kind of presents, and etc., etc. Et uh, and following this report, what happened? That some delegations withdrew these members from the passé membership, but they continue to be members of their national parliaments. So, what was the punishment or not? Yeah, they, they just left uh, delegation, but they continue to be in their national delegations, respectful members, like Mr. de Stex or, or others. They're still the senators, they're still respected people in their society. There were some articles, but that's it. Uh, two key people, like members of Azerbaijani delegation, Elhan Suleimanov and Muslim Mamada, who are proved to distribute bribes, envelopes within this parliamentary assembly. They just, government of Azerbaijan, uh, just replaced them by two other members, and that's it. And they also continue to sit in national parliaments without any punishment. Uh, when it comes to the uh, to my meetings with the Secretary General, I would like to say that I hadn't couple or three or five meetings. I had dozens of meetings. Uh, the first meeting uh, was in 2010. Uh, and uh, Secretary General invited me as, uh, as, as a Azerbaijani ambassador to say about, I don't remember a particular case, but I think that there was arrest of journalists in Azerbaijan. And he said that he's worried about that. And 
I answer a team that, you know, Secretary General, the best definition of ambassador is an honest man sent abroad to life for the best of his country. And I would lie if I would believe that what was happening in my country is for the best of, of my country. Since I don't believe, I will tell you what I believe. And uh, uh, probably it was shocking for the Secretary General when Ambassador uh, says uh, things like this. But we had dozens of meetings afterwards. And, and uh, on some occasions, I am thankful to the Secretary General when he was intervening and making statements uh, about uh, several uh, human rights violations in Azerbaijan that passed attention of Secretariat, and I am thankful for this. I'm also probably, um, uh, Mr. Omsic said that uh, there are rules of procedure on, on whistleblowing when uh, the officials of the council should, should inform about this. Probably he also wanted to, uh, to save uh, maybe uh, confidentiality of the meetings because I was top, uh, uh, top person from Azerbaijani government, ambassador being here. But in the meantime, uh, uh, what I was feeling that uh, he, Secretary General, really wanted to stay away of this, you know, because what was happening was within the passé, and, and even today he says that it is, uh, you know, it's what was happening is passé. He doesn't want to associate himself with what was happening in passé, and, and I believe that this is not a European approach, approach of European politician who should share responsibility for entire institution. Passage sessions are uh, four times a year, but, uh, but Council of Europe uh, works all the year, and, and responsibility should be shared by all. Uh, probably the only institution that was not affected by all this corruption is the court, uh, but, but probably the court, uh, and I am very uh, uh, thankful and really uh, are happy that the court still remained independent in many respects. Uh, I, uh, I was asked to give uh, to also to investigation board more details about uh, what I said, when I said. Unfortunately, uh, I wasn't making the records because, uh, because I was alone uh, for, for certain reasons, but all the meetings were attended by by he, at that time head of his secretary, Bjorn Berger. He was making the records of the, our meeting so that uh, probably he can uh, someday in the future uh, bring the light to, to the record that he was making. Can you, can you just yeah. give a few examples of, I know you don't have an exact memory of all the dozens of meetings you've had, but can you give a few examples of the specific information you provided um, in those meetings? You know, at, uh, at least in some of the meetings, uh, for example, there were a best of people in Azerbaijan. And, uh, and, and I was seeing that there is not any reaction from the Secretary, Secretary General, while there was a reaction from the State Department, there was a reaction from the European Union, OECE. And I was saying that, uh, Mr. Secretary General, there was serious human rights violation, but there is no reaction. And uh, uh, then, uh, in, in, in several occasions, uh, he was angry to the Baku office for not giving information about that to the Secretariat, and he was making uh, statements on specific human rights violations. Uh, on the corruption, because Secretary General acknowledged that I was telling him about the corruption in general in Azerbaijan, but I wasn't telling him about you know, specific uh, cases within the Council of Europe. But, but even today, we don't have many specific things. You know, we, we knew that things are happening. We knew that these two people, uh, particularly Mr. Elkhan Suleimanov and Hussein <coughs> Mamadov, were doing this work from the first days. Hussein uh, 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 Mamadov was not member, he was like interpreter. And, but of course I didn't know, even today I don't know who received how much, because many things were done uh, in, uh, very, in, in very confidential way. Uh, lots of money were given in cash. At one specific uh, uh, issue, uh, on several street, I saw that uh, they, they, they planning meetings in the hotels, 
with different deputies. But of course, nobody was uh, opening his uh, parcel and distributing money. It was done quite confidential. Even members of Azeri parliamentary delegation, head of delegation, was not aware because it was uh, responsibility was down to particularly this Elhan Suleimanov and uh, another person who became now the deputy of Azerbaijani parliament, uh, Muslim Mamada. But, but I was warning that uh, you have to see, you have to investigate, there are uh, strange things happening, that these two guys are moving within the Council of Europe and proposing services, uh, recruiting the deputies, etc., etc. Uh, but but I, I cannot now remember uh, what day, what I said exactly. But, but clearly I was warning uh, uh, Secretary General and Mr. Bielberger uh, about what was happening within the walls of this organization. This is my uh, short answer to your question. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and what was, when I, when I was asking to do something, you know, about human rights violations, about uh, about uh, corruption cases, uh, both uh, Secretary General, and, and I also would like to have to say that I had also the same kind of confidential meetings with the Commissioner for Human Rights. That time, uh, 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 Mujnik, yeah, with with Mujnik, we, uh, with uh, with Leila and with uh, uh, Mujnik, we we had also meetings. Both of them were saying that we don't have enough power to do something. So uh, we don't have support of member states. They were saying that only few member states would support to press more. Like big member states are not willing to do anything. But I was saying that, yeah, but, but, but you are as very important people. You can push, you can go and meet member states, say that this is, you have to intervene. But they were, I understand that they wanted to preserve their, you know, you know political uh, status. They didn't want to get into all this, but it's the wrong approach. They should have gone to member states and say that this country, behavior of this country is unacceptable. They destroy our values. They destroy our institution. Was it done? I never heard that. They, they, the problem they, they, they spoke, but nobody knows about it. Whether they raised the issue uh, on the serious level before, uh, before European governments, before member states. Whether they uh, raised this issue before European Union leadership. Uh, maybe yes, maybe not, but nobody knows. But, and they have to answer this question. As I would you now, we have 160 political prisoners, including Ilgar Mamada, who is director of the School of Political Studies of the Council of Europe. What happened? There are court decisions, there are committee of ministers' decisions, and, and over the six years, this man is in prison without any, any uh, crime. And, and the same are uh, 160 people. There are members of the uh, Azerbaijani Popular Front. There are independent journalists. 160 people, completely innocent people, are in prison. And, okay, vague statements, and, 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 and I would say that after this investigation started, there is no any statement. Now we see torches uh, made against uh, Popular Front uh, activists. Torches, they use electric devices to torture people. And, and information comes through the Red Cross uh, uh, organization, which is operated in Baku, uh, fixed that these people have been uh, subjected to electric shock uh, tortures. What is happening? We, for the last uh, one year, we don't hear the Council of Europe at all. Council of Europe just decided to stay away. Whether this is tactics or what is, or what is the plans in the future, uh, I'm, I'm very uh, 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 pessimistic. Uh, we, we were also are very... Are you finished? Yeah, just... Uh, Azerbaijani society, uh, public was also very shocked when the Secretary General was among the first 
to congratulate uh, Ilham Aliyev with his election as a president uh, uh, in uh, this year. And, and this is also something that we we wouldn't expect the Secretary General to be uh, uh, the second after Erdogan to send a congratulation letter to Ilham Aliyev. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your introduction. Um, that leaves us room for about 15 minutes of questions because I'm going to break off a little bit early so people can slowly go to their meetings. Can you, before you ask a question, just simply state who you are? I may know you, but not everyone else may. Know. Hi, um, my name is uh, Udo Feinstein. I'm from Dubai. I'm not a parliamentarian. Um, the first, first one is key points. Whether there was intervention or corruption or whatsoever from um, Azerbaijan. So first is um, submission of um, um, of Christoph Strasser, yeah. who was since 40 year old friend of mine. He was not allowed to, is, uh, to come to Azerbaijan. Second question is about um, Christoph Strasser. Uh, the second point was uh, election observation about uh, three years ago. Um, uh, said uh, said uh, so bad that we can't do not come. As far as I know, um, there was a division or, um, in the Council of Europe, and finally uh, the Council of Europe came. But has this been somehow influenced? And the third question is, uh, we have here a, a new uh, political group um, called uh, Abuse of Name for Democrats. And uh, there are three members of Azerbaijan. Without this, they uh, would not have had the quorum. Has there been some intervention or help or uh, from Azerbaijan to create this book. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much on the uh, yeah on the Christopher Strasso uh, report. You know, it was uh, uh, successfully blocked uh, uh, in the Fase thanks to this lobbying, thanks to this uh, dirty money. Christopher uh, uh, Strasso wanted to visit Azerbaijan. Uh, he was refused a visa. Uh, uh, and the embassy was trying to find the ways. Just they asked him to uh, to write, uh, you know, like like almost uh, to to promise that he goes to Azerbaijan as the member of uh, German Parliament, not as the uh, passé, you know, reporter. You know, and uh, but despite uh, uh, some pressure. Uh, uh, he was never allowed to go to Azerbaijan. This is in itself is unacceptable. Uh, we can understand when Azerbaijan didn't give, uh, give access to uh, deputies, PASE members who visited uh, occupied territories. But but when uh, it is it doesn't give uh, uh, a visa to person to member of the parliamentary assembly who wants to go and to see. Uh, uh, situation on the ground of the human rights violations, it's unacceptable. Uh, and when it comes to the elections, you know that there was division. That the, in fact, uh, Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly Observation Mission uh, did, in fact, what did, uh, did uh, harm, more harm than positive, because they split with the ODF report and they were, were making. A report which was contrary to ordeal. So, within the observation, election observation mission, ordeal role is exceptional. It's put as the key, and normally they all align with ordeal uh, uh, report. But uh, it was probably the first time that uh, <coughs> parliamentary assembly uh, delegation split and gave completely different opinion, which is favorable, so that. They put uh, ordeal in bad situation, so that there are like a division between European Union, be between uh, within democracy. Can you imagine? It's also damage to ordeal. It's damage also to to European values. Thank you. Question. Uh, third question was the political group with democracy. Yeah, the, the, you know, uh, I think that there are. Uh, you mentioned one group, but I'm sure that there are still many groups within the uh, within the parliament which is still operating in favor of them. They are just silenced for, for a while, but they will appear in the future if if there is no serious measures taken. Well, um, interesting to hear. I'm sorry, I was a little bit late, but the, the, uh, 
with your experience, uh, it would be great some kind of kind of guidance how to um, to find uh, this kind of, of uh, um, system and activity working. The career diplomacy have been ongoing for quite some time, and I guess you have a, a, some old, uh, experience of your own on that as well. Uh, have you written it down somewhere? Uh, because there was a lot of information here and that could be needed to, to look deeper into. Yeah, thank, thank you very much for this information. Uh, in fact, I, I, uh, I gave uh, almost more than two hours uh, testimony before the investigation body about what I know, about all the uh, details. I also mentioned that uh, the, the, not only uh, I said there were like uh, funds uh, uh, allocated to diplomatic missions uh, for lobbying. You know, it can be anything. It can be presents. It can be caviar. It can be carpets, uh, and it is done uh, in key uh, in key embassies like uh, in in OSCE in Washington, Moscow, uh, uh, Council of Europe, European Union, so that. Uh, 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 in, in some uh, why you know, those who gave the testimony they were saying that ah, it was difficult not to accept because it was like be, uh, people believe that to, to, to refuse it wouldn't be, would be unpolite you know like when uh, Azerbaijani delegation <laughs> comes and says oh this is a small present you know they, they even say that yes we were Acknowledge, they even acknowledge that they were organizing caviar parties afterwards. When uh, after the meeting of Azerbaijan, they were opening and having like caviar parties. They secretariat acknowledges this, uh, but they say that oh, we were thinking it's, it would be un, unpolite not to, to do that. And uh, probably yes, but but if you go right now visit many cabinets within the. This building, you will see. Uh, maybe they took, they have taken uh, carpets, but there are carpets in, in all the offices of the uh, within, within this uh, uh, building. Uh, so that caviar, small. I, I even don't mention this because because it was like uh, like drinking the water, like small presents, like caviar, carpets, souvenirs, silver souvenirs. It was like like a, like a must. You know, uh, whenever a delegation was coming, the people were looking. What, what they have in their hands, you know. Uh, so uh, this is like, like, like drinking uh, water. It wasn't uh, even uh, uh, because they were much more serious things. Like, like, but, but Can I get some the first some step, some? yeah, the first step was seeing who would react which way. Uh, and people who were invited to Azerbaijan, they were coming with the families, with the children, coming to stay in five-star hotels with all the services included. Uh, these uh, two hours of uh, in interviews, uh, can, uh, can that one be released? Yeah, they, they, they are in the open. They are in the open source? Yes. Okay. So right. you, you can have it uh, in, the, uh, in the website. You, you can have it, yeah. Um, I must correct. Um, the, um, the material by the investigation body can only be accessed mm -hmm by um, the um, uh, uh, public prosecutors and, and the like in the counties. Yeah. It's not public. Yeah, I'm mean, yeah, general. So, no, no, but it's... It, it's it's very precise. Just like this much. It, it is a lot. What can be done is, I believe, you may have a copy of what you did. Did you sign a copy? No. It was all... Uh, or, but before Italian investigation team, no, no, I signed I'm it. But but before uh, investigation council of your investigation board, I, I I signed it. Beginning that I wouldn't uh, spread information or something like this. But but I didn't sign anything uh, uh, under because it was oral inter oral uh, interview. I think it would be very helpful, and that is what um, you are saying mm -hmm. that you would try to compile as much exact information you have about the five star hotel about whom was bribed, <coughs> about when you um, warned um, the Secretary General, and make it a public statement. Yeah. Because that's what we basically would like. Transparency would be great. Because if you consider that, and that will take you a week or two of work, and, and 
doing it here, you're, we're asking a bit of work, but that would be extremely helpful for us as parliamentarians. That's what you're yep. suggesting. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot of questions, so short questions, short answers. Jordi, sorry for looking at you for that moment. <laughs> 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 um, stupid just to say about corruption in Azerbaijan, because everyone knows that uh, Azerbaijan is uh, a very corrupt country. Why I should tell to the Secretary General that there is corruption in Azerbaijan? Of course it was in the context of, of this corruption uh, spreading uh, within the Council of Europe. I, I, that time, when it, even in 2010, 2011, uh, it was just from the beginning, you know, because the, the real uh, El Khan Suleiman's work was even more active from 2012, 2013, uh, uh, until probably now. Uh, that time, I only, it was just on the cradle, it was starting to spread. And I was saying that there is bad things happening. You know, that there is, but, but I didn't know myself lots of uh, real things, you know. Yeah, it was the just... The question was about the, the main point of yeah. your conversation. Yeah. So what, you essentially are suggesting that the Secretary General lied to the Parliamentary Assembly. Uh, I, I didn't read exactly what he said, but but but, but probably uh, uh, saying Very that is yeah, tough. saying that he just heard about uh, that I spoke only about Azerbaijan. Uh, of course, it was Azerbaijani yeah. corruption, but 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 coming here to the Council Thank of you. Europe. That's a very that's a very clear answer. Thank you, because he did indeed say. Uh, there's alumnus. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry, the first gentleman there. Uh, uh, my name is Mladen Borsic. I'm a member of the Parliamentary uh, Assembly. This is a high profile corruption, and it is the matter of the prosecution offices of all countries concerned. Uh, uh, meaning that members who are involved in that uh, should be prosecuted in their countries and uh, in their judicial system. Do you know, is there any other country except the Italy that is uh, making any uh, procedures in that way? Thank you very much. As well as I know, uh, the, Belgium, uh, the Belgium authorities are investigating Alan de Schneck's case because there are very, very serious, uh, uh, serious uh, things coming out. Uh, the Alan Deschek set up Academy of Election Observation that gave a positive uh, report, uh, opinion about elections in Azerbaijan. In fact, when Belgium authorities started to investigate, there wasn't an academy, it was just on paper, registered on the, on the white name of uh, uh, Stef Goris and Alan de Steck. Uh, but, but he's still uh, the senator, he's uh, still a member of the Belgian parliament. Uh, I, in the Belgian police, they asked me to stay in touch and they might ask me to come again and speak on these issues. So, at least Belgium, I know. I don't know whether Spanish or Maltese or any other government. But you know that there are many other things, you know, like. Uh, 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 bank accounts in Malta, you heard about that, uh, Pilatus Bank and other things. You know, it is it's now much bigger than the Council of Europe. Uh, I just wanted to point out that, that is the money flow that is interested in 
these methods, and uh, the question is which institution can follow that? I believe that, uh, for example, uh, if a council of Europe may ask OLAF, OLAF organization, which is anti corrupt, I don't know whether they can ask the EU corruption institution or money laundering institution to, to help. Not to, to be directly, but to see, it, normally it's within the EU member states. You know, all of it operates uh, and, and investigates uh, corruption within the uh, EU member states. But, but, but this concerns uh, uh, all EU states and, 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 and other countries, it's uh, 47 uh, countries. And of course, uh, I believe that if Maybe uh, if there could be uh, a resolution calling for EU investigation bodies to help in go further with this investigation, not just uh, stop on, on this uh, report by investigation body, but, but also to have access to the police information, to what was uh, uh, gathered by other intelligence, uh, financial institutions, because there are accounts which have been uh, information about the accounts, how money were coming, and there are many, many other. There is an organization which was in this journalist of in, independent organization, which was, which was investigating uh, money laundering, London March scandals uh, on Malta in in uh, in, in yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably this is. Okay, okay. Yeah. But, but just just to be clear, uh, Olaf cannot investigate because Olaf can only investigate anything which is in the competence of the EU. We are not an EU. <laughs> my conviction, so I'm talking for myself right now, that um, the things that are found are so serious that they warrant the public prosecutor. So obviously the whole investigation which was started because of my resolution was only meant to give enough evidence that people would be able to indict people in their own countries. And um, if that's not happening, what's up to you is to go to those countries and to file uh, a criminal complaint. Because that's the only way of, uh, of kickstarting it or making sure that the public prosecutor takes a decision on prosecuting or not. I've got many questions. I've seen many things. So. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you. Uh, my, my name is Didi Toranzo. I'm a parliamentarian from Iceland. Uh, I haven't read the report, but uh, I'd like to ask if uh, these bribes are are mainly associated with soften criticism of of the government of Azerbaijan, or was there anything else? Short answer, because that's an yeah. easy one. Yeah, uh, uh, there are also claims that some other countries also uh, gave, uh, provided the gifts, but it is not 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 uh, about money transfers or bigger. So there are uh, uh, because following this report of uh, uh, European Stability Initiative. Uh, Azerbaijani government said that no, it was it, it is not Azerbaijan, but other countries did, like like, like uh, as always, the finger goes to Armenia and Moldova and, and other countries, and they were like, what what, what was found that uh, some other delegations were just giving like small souvenirs, like uh, they 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 were coming and seeing in the hotels like a bottle of wine or or a carpet or uh, books or booklets, things like this. So that, but, 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 but the most serious is about uh, huge amounts of money transfers, uh, business companies who are paying from one account to another account, like uh, for, for consultancy, for example, like look of a long case. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but it is big, big <laughs> answer. We'll make sure you get the report. The report is about bribes mm. from mm -hmm. Azerbaijan, um, trying to soften the critique on political prisoners yeah. and on human rights violations. There is critique on the report from Azerbaijan, but also from others, that it wasn't not just Azerbaijan engaged in but that has not been properly investigated by the committee. So I mean, the committee focused not exclusively, but mainly on Azerbaijan. 99%. It's worth our briefings. Yeah. 99%. But 1% it was, is about Russia. Yeah. <laughs> just 1% <one, laughs> is about Russia. Russia is not a country. Which, uh, <coughs> it's very, it's it's not always. Uh, you know, he speaks Russian. Uh, I will. Talk. The, the the question is to you. Yeah. 
Не считаете ли вы, что коррупция давно вышла из зала парламентской ассамблеи Совета Европы и переместилась в секретариат Совета Европы? Не стоит ли начать проверку самого секретариата? Это мое обязанность смотреть, что происходит именно в отношении парламентариев. Я считаю, что в принципе в основном э, все, что происходило, это, конечно же, касается парламентской ассамблеи, но и э, в, не, в меньшей степени возможности предъявлять. Ну, больше, конечно же, парламентской ассамблеи. Problems, the, um, well. yeah. Если бы э, было бы по-другому, наверное, в репорте э, было бы по-другому указано. Поэтому мы доверяем репорту. Council 
Absolutely. I would just like to give one precision because there's a lot of confusion about the rules and mechanisms that are applicable as regards the Council of Europe Secretariat. In fact, we, have a, we don't have to rely on OLAF, which I fully agree is not competent in the Council. We have a Directorate of Internal Oversight, which is competent and is even must investigate all these cases. We have a clear rule enacted by the Secretary General, Rule Number 3027 of 10 January, on awareness and prevention of fraud, fraud corruption. Under this rule, every Secretariat member has a duty, and it's a duty of, to report, and I quote, any reasonable suspicion of misconduct may lead to fraud or corruption. We report this to the Director of Internal Oversight, who has an independent investigation authority. And if the investigation finds, confirms suspicions, then disciplinary proceedings leading up, possibly up to dismissal, will follow. So there's a clear framework uh, which applies to Secretariat members. And interesting, under the rule, Secretary General? even the rule applies also to members of the Assembly, but they are encouraged because the General cannot instruct uh, parliamentary members, but they are also encouraged to report. So there is, uh, I mean, and there will be, what is quite, I must say, just one remark, what is quite disappointing, I must say, the report, very well done in some parts, in many parts, is at least in my personal view, not very clear. And uh, what is also a bit uh, disappointing is that what you mentioned, the report says clearly confidential information will be given to national and judicial authorities, but there's no word to the competent internal authorities in the Council of Europe, namely the director of the internal oversight. But I hope uh, it will not be an obstacle that this information will also be given to the director of oversight. So there is a framework in the Council existing that will support the Thank you very much. It's very interesting information. I think it's pretty possible to follow that up. We want to be very precise because this would be an interesting question to put forward to the Uh, 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 I, our relation, it wasn't one meeting or two meetings. 
uh, and Secretary General was taking actions on very important issues that I raised before him. So that why he would do that? Because on, on, uh, he made statements several times when I was telling him that the Secretary General, there was, uh, there was human rights violation. Why you did, did it? He said, oh, I didn't receive uh, information from the uh, from Baku office. And Baku office was, was uh, I don't know, uh, punished or something because I said to Bjorn Berger, and they were very angry uh, about uh, office, Council of Europe office in Baku not informing the cabinet about uh, the case because it was, I, I said it was State Secretary made the uh, State Department made the statement, uh, European Union, but there is nothing from the Council of Europe. So uh, we had not only meetings within the Council of Europe, we, 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 we almost developed friendly relations, we had uh, lunches together, uh, and uh, uh, Secretary General made farewell. Uh, uh, we had farewell lunch with him, and he said that I'm the only ambassador with whom he had farewell. But we had confidential, very strongly. Mr. Berger, who was present at the meetings, he said to investigation body that we developed uh, uh, even family relationship. We, we were friends, my wife with, with myself and Bjorn's uh, family. We, so we were having lunch together. Uh, then if, if it would be like this, then I would be very good KGB agent so that to have uh, such a relationship. <laughs> Now they can say that I, I am trying to block TAP project. <laughs> Sorry, there was, there was a second question as well. And as, based upon what you know and what you have read in the report, has the corruption been rooted out in the Parliament of the Assembly? Or has uh, are quite a few people in your government uh, to, to be mentioned in the report? Uh, I, I believe that this is just the beginning of a very early stage of the investigation. I, I am sure that there should be more, uh, uh, more uh, work on the secretariat, passé secretariat level, because they were present, they were going with the delegations. Uh, those who have been aware, the only those who have been uh, particularly mentioned by me were questioned, but, but there are many, many, many others who were, uh, who were part of this. Well, Azerbaijani government wouldn't be able to, to work so effectively if they wouldn't have information about, for example, candidates for election observation mission. So the secretariat was giving information that, you know, these, these, these people have submitted their, uh, their uh, candidates for, to be in the reporter uh, on Azerbaijan. And so that they were, Secretariat was leaking first information. Then, as our government was trying, responding and trying to, to replace one reporter with another one. And the report says briefly about that, but not completely. I think that there is still work to be done in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for being present here. This isn't the end, unfortunately. Thank you very much for giving a clear and extensive uh, answers. Um, you're still here this afternoon, so yeah. people who want to talk to you can talk to you, and we'll go on with five corrupt characters.